fine. It's it started. My goodness sakes. Um, Looks like it's populating though, so that's good. Yeah. Uh, um, Adina, can you send a li link on Parent Square? People are asking. Yeah, let me connect with Beth. Okay. Okay, we're going to wait a little bit longer so people can get back in. So we have uh, our two directors are in the Spanish channel. No, I don't think yeah. the interpretation's been started yet. I have not started oh, yet. Yeah. yeah. But are they there? It, just give it a second. She's 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 trying to get everybody situated. Yeah, I don't see the world yet, the little world thing. There it is. Okay, Steph, did you put Stephanie into the link? Okay, all right. It looks like she's in there now. Okay, I just, I see her here. Oh, I see, you can see her here, even though she's in there. I got it, okay, got it, got it, got it. And then did we send the link in, Beth, did you send the link for Parent Square? So this is the same link that's on the website. It's the same meeting. Yeah, I don't know. Parents are just requesting it. I, I... Okay, so send it through Parent Square to everyone in the district. Um, I don't know. Sure, why not? If anybody's up at ten thirty and wants to come join the meeting, okay, more than yeah. Okay, I'll do that now. Okay. Or Facebook, I don't know, either one. Um, President Fong, um, I am. I would request that we um, table to the February seventeenth meeting. E, hold on. E five. E5, February 17th. Lewis Education Center and Preschool. E6 to February 24th. Seniority date tie breaking. So that works with your calendar and your deadlines. You. Does that work with your deadline and calendars? Is it me? Maybe it's me. It's yeah. not me, I don't think. Can anyone else hear me? Yeah, I can. I can hear you. Yeah. Yeah, Lewis, Lewis is fine for the 17th, Lord. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. And tie breaking can move to the 24th. Thank you, superintendent and assistant superintendents. All right. I think we have a problem with Allegria still. She, she's in the uh, participants. She has her hand raised. She needs her, the interpreter. She needs the interpreter link. I did just send her the interpreter link. That's the glitch that we have with Marcella. I didn't get that. Could you try again? Oh, Siri, <laughs> stop it. Um, that's the glitch that we have with Marcella sometimes where she shows on the attendee side. I don't have a way to move her over um, to the okay. panel. Let's not worry about it right now. Let's move on with Marcella's, I don't know what the situation is with her. So Should we tell Allegria to get out and just join? I can promote her to a panelist. I just can't put her in as an interpreter. All right, we want her back. No, we need them. We, we need her to stay there in case Dan's system goes out. 
Can interpret. she translate in that channel? No, she can't. She needs the link. And she's in the uh, attendee channel right oh, now. She doesn't not... have the link. She, she, she doesn't have the link. But she, she did join with the link. However, there's a glitch with Zoom sometimes where it sends her to the attendee side. I'm here now. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, but you're not in the moderator link. Okay. So I'm... do we have Dan with us or Marcella? I have not seen either one. I'm texting them right now. So I use we... the same I use the same interpreter link, Adina, and it brought me in here. Yes, and that's a glitch with Zoom that we've had with Marcella in the past when she can't get in. So that's unfortunately um, something that I cannot fix. Okay, so Adina, let's not worry about Dan and Marcella right now, unless because Stephanie and Allegria can't go to the interpretation or they can? Stephanie's fine. Allegria, I cannot put in the channel. Okay. Okay, Stephanie says she Are couldn't you... hear us. Can you, can, we can't, can't hear, hear you. you. Can read your lips though. So Stephanie in, this, in the interpreter channel? No, we haven't turned it on yet. I could hear her. I don't know why. I'm in you the Spanish her channel, audio. hearing her. Either. I can hear you. Stephanie's in the Spanish. Okay. I can hear you, Stephanie. In Stephanie's Spanish. in the Spanish channel. Okay. So, Stephanie, you're going to do the interpretation then. That that works. Okay. Go, Steph. Go. Parents, really sorry. Obviously. Zoom world. Stephanie says, speak slowly. I think the one sentence, one sentence like Director De La Cruz was suggesting works better. Thank you for everyone's patience, board members, staff, parents. And um, Beth, let's get started again. Okay, thank you, everyone. Um, I'm just going to take the names that are from my list that had their hands raised before the meeting had to be restarted. And one of those names is Kate Lewis. Kate, you're next. And of course. Oh, uh, can you bring her over Beth or only uh, Adina can? I think I can do it if Adina makes me a co-host. Yeah, Adina had to go to the restroom. She has been stuck at her desk. So let me see if I'm a host or a whatever. What it looks unfortunately like she is the only host. Boy. Okay. Um, it's all right. It, it's okay. She'll she deserves to go to the restroom. <laughs> we will wait. Okay, so back to the. Um, I noticed that that's five bucks. <laughs> back to the um, those moving those items, um, Lori. That you, it's okay. Moving yes. those items. Yes. So was the board's fine. Oh yeah, we, we lost took... for a minute. So yes. Okay. I'm sorry, do we have to vote on uh, those items? Yes. Okay, thank you. Yes. We do not vote on this item though. No, but you, the change in the agenda. Right. There were two items or three items that were being removed. That, that, that we're I going to, that we're going to move. E5 to February 17, E6 to February 24. So, Laura, do you want to call for the motion? Oh, I thought we'd do it later, but I guess we could just do it now. Yeah, now. yeah let's just do it now. Okay, so um, let's call for the motion to move item five to the 17th of February and item six to the 24th of February. So moved. So moved. So that was moved by Jill McCormick and seconded by uh, oh Director Medina, I think. Yeah. 
And since Adina isn't here. Back, President Fung. We're taking a roll call vote. Are you up to speed on that? Yes. It was uh, moved by Director McCormick and seconded by Director Medina. Director Lopez. Aye. Director McCormick. Aye. Director Medina. Aye. Director Manieri. She's in the translation. In the channel. He said yes. She said yes. Director De La Cruz. Aye. Director Sheffield. Aye. Director Flores. Aye. President Fung. Aye. Thank you, everybody. All right, we are moving somebody someplace. Okay. Oh, we're moving in uh, speakers. We are moving in speakers. We have public comment and we're still on item E3. And Kate Lewis <laughs> is moving over to give her public comment. Thank you, Kate. Hi there. Hopefully you can hear me. Yes. Yes. Perfect. All right. Um, and, and we'll be doing the one in one sentence. So my name is Kate Lewis. I'm a parent of a first grade student in Santa Rosa City Schools. Would you like me to pause while she does you, the you can pause. You, you can pause just a little bit. We do have okay. simultaneous, just slowly. Yeah, just, yeah, slowly. Okay. Um, so my first grader was telling me today about an amazing video that her teachers put together, um, various teachers throughout the school put together a video reading, Oh, the Places You'll Go. And she really wanted to read it tonight because um, it, it meant a lot to her. It's a special book for our family anyway. And as we were reading it, we came to a page um, that talks about this terrible place called the waiting place where you are waiting on this and you are waiting on that and you are, and people are waiting for a yes or no. And it struck me that that is where students and family are. Um, we're in this terrible waiting place, just waiting desperately um, for definitive answers. Now, granted, I had no idea how, um, uh, what, what this meeting would be like after reading that story tonight, but, um, but we're, we're there in this waiting place as we're waiting for answers around returning to school. This process is complex. I understand that, we all understand it. It is absolutely that mountain that needs to be moved. And, and I appreciate all of the work that everyone has been doing to move this mountain forward um, over the last, 10 months, 11 months, and, and all of the work on developing the return to school plans. You're moving this mountain slowly and, and we, we know that it is moving. But as parents and as families and students, we need this to move a little faster. I'm asking that just as our community has learned from one another, how to cope with risks and safety and complexities of wildfires after tubs. I am asking that you as our leaders learn from other communities who have already moved this mountain safely and successfully. I am asking you to do more and do it now. Teachers have been doing more. Parents have been doing more, and we're asking as leaders that you please do this more. Move this mountain as your number one priority. Do it with urgency. We need to leave this waiting place. Thank you. Thank you. And of course, we're going to ask um, that everybody remembers we have two minutes for public comment, if you can. I know we're asking you to speak slowly too. Our next comment is Donna Gibson. Hi, my name is Donna Gibson and I'm a special education uh, teacher for uh, the district. 
And um, I'd like to start by thanking um, President Fong for her remarks regarding the Press Democrat um, story that came out. I really, as a teacher for our district, appreciated your words. I'd also like to thank um, some of the, the directors for their thoughtful comment, questions and comments after um, Dr. Kitamura's uh, presentation on return to school. Um, I'd especially like to thank um, um, Dr. Uh, or I'm sorry, Director De La Cruz. I'm sorry if I get your names wrong. Your screens are little. Dr. Sheffield um, and uh, doc, uh, Dr. Uh, Director Medinas. And, um, and so, and I do wanna remark on, um, on uh, uh, Superintendent uh, Maceris' comments about uh, the return to school meetings that we've been doing with um, special ed. I think we, as a team, we've been working very hard with, the, um, with our program managers and um, also on Thursday nights with the community. I invite the community to come out and join us tomorrow. Those links are available. You know, don't, don't ask me where, I, I don't know, but Parent Square maybe. But um, um, we've had a lot of real um, powerful, helpful conversations and um, so I find that very helpful. But I do wanna say that um, I come from a family of healthcare workers that are frontline, that are in the COVID uh, hospitals, working on the floor, saying goodbye for family members to people that are dying. And it's a serious, serious uh, illness that we're talking about. Yeah. Okay. And so- Thank you. Okay, thanks. Thank you. And next is Melissa Madigan. Thank you, can you hear me okay? Yes. I am a teacher and a parent. I have three children, two school age, one's in TK and one's in third grade and I also have a newborn. As a parent, I am unsure that having my own children go back to a type of schooling that 100% different than what we they are used to is worth it. Do I really want my children learning with masks on behind plastic glass for four hours while constrained to their desks with no social interactions? As a teacher who likes to engage with each child one-on-one -on -one while offering close proximity care, I even question how effective my own teaching will be. I understand for some parents that having their students learning at home is not an option, but I wonder if parents and students who are pushing to reopen truly understand the school that awaits during a pandemic. At the last board meeting, I heard students say they want to go back because they miss field trips, they miss recess, they miss playing, they miss carpet time, they miss their friends. I don't know if they realize when schools do reopen, these things will not be allowed. I also, as a mother and a teacher, worry about my own safety and my own health when schools do reopen. I have been very vigilant being a high risk myself and having a newborn. We wear masks constantly, we social distance and we shelter in place. My four month old has not, hasn't seen any family members. He hasn't seen his grandparents, his aunts, his uncles. He's seen no family since he was born. So I've been sheltering. This is in fact a community spread disease. And I know that others do not shelter, wear masks as I do sometimes. I have heard many of my students and their families are traveling, they're hosting large parties, they're getting together, which again is their rights. But now with school reopening, the choices they are making will unfortunately have a huge impact Thank you. on You're my family. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Madigan. Our next comment is Fawn Etienne. Good evening, Dr. Kitamura and Santa Rosa City School Board members. My name is Fawn Etienne. I'm a parent of a student in the district as well as a teacher. 
uh, at the beginning of January, I contracted the coronavirus. As I had no contact with anyone else at the time, it is very probable that it was transmitted to me by my husband, who is a firefighter and a first responder working with COVID patients. He had been vaccinated in December, and despite having the vaccine, likely brought it home to our household. Though teachers want and need the vaccine, it is no guarantee of a stop to family and community infection. I became ill with symptoms and after 14 days of quarantine was still very sick. Fortunately, I was able to work from home for the next month and my students did not lose even one single day of interactions, though I was very sick. If I were teaching, if I were not teaching remotely, my class would have had a substitute for a whole month. In years past and in under normal circumstances, our district has had a very hard time for getting subs for normal amounts of absences. More often than not, if you were sick or were scheduled to attend a training, your class was broken up and, and parceled out into other teachers' classrooms. We can't do that right now. When we return to campus, there is a huge, will be a huge increase in the number of teacher absences due to quarantines and illnesses. What is the district's plan to attract and retain the large number of new substitutes that will be needed? Thank you very much. Thank you. Next is A. Bishop, and I'm going to guess that that might be Ann Bishop who had her hand raised earlier. Hi, can is you hear Anne? me? Hi, is this yeah, Anne? This is Anne Bishop. Thank you. Hi, I joined your meeting a little late, um, so I was unable to hear the comments on the Press Democrat article, but I wanna thank you all um, for doing the hard work of steering this ship towards moving. I've been in, um, my daughter is in kindergarten in the Santa Rosa School, City School District and she has yet to actually step foot on her campus. As a parent, I'm just, from my perspective, I read many articles and I see that all around us, all the other counties are opening despite these risks. And I know that our county has 40 school districts while other counties have fewer. And I would be curious, perhaps there could be another article written or comments made about how we can move to reopen as our neighbors have in other counties. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Stacia Okura. Good evening, Dr. Kitamura and school board. I'm a parent of a student in TK at CCLA. And I wanna thank our teachers and our classified staff who are working so hard during these times to support our children. <clears throat> I just wanna say, I appreciate you so very much. And thank you, Dr. Kitamura and district staff for your detailed presentation tonight on your progress toward a, a safe return to school. It was particularly good to hear that the elementary rosters have been completed and to see the quantities of PPE that are in stock. I'm also happy to hear that the district and SRTA continue to work together to be ready for in-person instruction by March 1st. But when I look at my calendar, I see that there are only 12 working days until we arrive at March 1st. <clears throat> Assuming that our numbers remain where they are, parents need to get ready for our children to be in person in 12 working days. We're 100% committed to following safety protocols and making sure that our children follow them to keep the whole school community safe. We're also prepared to be flexible and understand that there may be openings and closings as the district follows safety protocols. We signed up for it and we're ready for it. Ready for it let us know what we need to do. Even if teachers have not been assigned to the cohorts yet, can you please let parents know <clears throat> which cohorts their children have been assigned to 
Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. We need some time to shuffle our work <clears throat> and our childcare schedules. And it would be great to get it at least a week before our children are back on campus. <clears throat> I'm also wondering if the board would consider an emergency meeting for next week, because if we wait for the next scheduled board meeting, that puts us only two days away from potentially our in-person instruction starting. Thank you, your time is up. Thank you, Ms. Akura. Um, next is Mary Hawkins. Hello, uh, my name is Mary Hawkins and I am the mother of two children in grades second and fifth. I would like to start by thanking you for your continued work to get our children back to school. I am so excited to see our community numbers dropping precipitously and allowing us to reopen schools. I am really impressed to see all of the work accomplished toward reaching our mutual goal of a return to in-person learning on March 1st. As a parent and a nurse, I am committing to getting our children back into school and to getting our teachers vaccinated. Despite my commitment to vaccinating teachers, I cannot support delaying our return to in-person learning until all staff are vaccinated, as was mentioned by Mr. Lyon. We cannot hinge our return to school upon the uncontrollable variable of vaccine availability. Despite heroic efforts by our teachers and staff, distance learning is not equitable to in-person learning. We are failing our children. And I'd like to thank you for your continued commitment to public education. Thank you, Ms. Hawkins. Next is Veronica Jordan. Good evening, can you hear me? Dr. Yes. And the board, I, I care deeply for this community and I am so worried about our community. I'm worried about our children. I'm worried about our teachers. I'm worried about our parents. I'm worried about our levels of anxiety and fear and suicidal ideation. I'm worried that what we just have lived over the last couple hours is what our children are living every day. And I'm really worried that we're not hearing one another. Even though our COVID numbers have fallen so precipitously, we are now well below that threshold that allows us to go back. Even though we have begun to vaccinate education and childcare workers, even though Dr. Kitamura presented a really nice plan tonight about readiness. I'm worried because I'm pretty sure that no one actually believes that we are going to open on March 1st. And I'm really worried that our county being the only county in the North Bay who is not either back or going back, that there's not actually a clear path. I'm worried because there is such anger and distress and distrust. I am worried because of the persistent fear amongst our teachers even with science and increasingly clear communication about safety. I'm worried because our leaders and our teachers leaders continue to make untrue public statements that undermine all of our trust. I'm worried because our vulnerable children are only made more vulnerable. I'm worried that it's easier to propagate a narrative of fear and division instead of one of safety and cohesion. But even though I'm worried, I have to be hopeful. I have to be hopeful for our community and our children. Please, Dr. Kitamura, please board, lead our children and our teachers back to school safely. Get our special ed kids in now. Give us a realistic date about how to plan our lives and get us on the path toward healing. Thank you. Thank you. We have three hands left. And that will be the end of public comment on this issue. So um, sorry if you did not have your hand raised. We just had three left, thank you. Next is Wendy Zapata. Yo soy Ana Cepeda. Buenas noches, Consejo Directivo de las Escuelas Públicas de Santa Rosa. Mi nombre es Ana y trabajo como Yarduri y cuido a niños en el Chayo Quier de la Escuela César Chávez. Soy abuela de un niño que asiste al séptimo grado. Quiero compartir que cuido de nueve a diez niños todos los días. Existe un protocolo a seguir 
donde se me toma, donde se me toma la temperatura. Yo he sido entrenada para tomar la temperatura y hacer los apuntes necesarios para saber si hay un niño con síntomas. Si hay niños con los síntomas de COVID-19, debo aislar al niño e inmediatamente llamar a la directora. Uso mi mascarilla, tenemos guantes y sanitizer. Soy responsable por los niños también que usen su mascarilla. Se lava, que se laven las manos con jabón y mantengan una distancia siguiendo las recomendaciones por salud pública. El tema de seguridad es de equidad. El, perdón, el tema de equidad es importante porque a nuestra comunidad latina no se le ha brindado la información necesaria para poder enviar a sus niños a la escuela o quedarse en casa. Nuestra comunidad vive con miedo. El COVID está aquí para quedarse y debemos seguir dando información a la comunidad para salir del miedo. Nuestros hijos y nietos merecen acceso a la educación pública. El tener clases por internet no le ayuda a un niño en su desarrollo. Los maestros deben tener el apoyo necesario como el equipo para sentirse seguros. El sistema educativo en California muchas veces nos ha fallado a la comunidad latina y hoy necesitamos que nos escuchen y que podamos participar en tomar las decisiones necesarias sin miedo. Yo les invito a ustedes que hagan un, un foro, una charla para escuchar la historia de nuestra comunidad hispana. Gracias y buenas noches. Gracias. Is there a board member who'd like to summarize what she said? Ever or ever, do you want to summarize? Well, um, she well she mentioned that she's uh, she's a grandmother that that, that works as a as a yard duty in uh, the Assessor Chavez Academy, and um, she the gist of it was that she's asking for a forum um, for us to reach out to uh, the Latino or the Spanish speaking community to make sure that we're including them in in, in this discussion uh, because COVID it has been a a very traumatizing sort of experience for our community and um, and she believes that um, we could you know uh, do a little bit more outreach to our Spanish speaking population so um, but I think what I, I wrote down is like forum for um, our Spanish speaking population so that was that was my my takeaway from this yeah I think I think in particular um, what I heard Mrs. Sepeda say is she, she's a yard duty and so she has been trained in many protocols to be protective of kids in, um, you know, in person, including taking temperatures and heightened sanitation um, and that sharing this information about the specifics of what they have received in terms of training, those people who are, you know, responsible for being with our kids would be helpful to kind of assuage the fears and the concerns of specifically Spanish speaking parents who may have a hard time getting this information. Um, and so, you know, as, as a yard duty and as a grandmother of a seventh grader, um, you know, this is information that she has that she's received from the district because of her position um, and how we get that out to the larger community um, is important moving forward. That's great. That is great. We, we, will, um, we, will, we will have those. Steve and his team does a great job and getting starting to get all the staff trained. Let's extend that out to parents. So good stuff. Okay, next. Um, and I'd just like to say that we have two more hands raised that were on our original list. And my apologies to anyone else who didn't have their hand raised before it was called. We do have the questions at srcs.k12.ca.us email address. That's questions with an S at the end at srcs 
k12.ca.us. We, we would invite you to submit your public comment there or to Dr. Kitamura's email address. So the last two comments will be Anastasio Tobar Rose, and then the last will be Sarah Ponsford. Anastasio, you're next. Oh, and Mr. Bailey is here too now. He was on the original list. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, I want to thank um, Director Ever Flores, uh, Director Alegria, Director Omar for reaching out to my call for action for these DLAC member families that have been ignored, have not been told the truth, have not been represented. Um, and I say that because I had a meeting with our DLAC representative from TCLA. She's attended every single meeting since November. And she has not mentioned once that, you know, these students had rights to be on campus and that is not acceptable. We are here in February and it is now just being talked about. And that is just a shame and disappointing to hear that. I wanna challenge every single board member to reach out to every single school that you represent and find out who your DLAC representative is, find out who your president is, the vice president of DLAC and educate them. Tell them the rights. Tell them that these students were supposed to be on campus since August and they've been ignored. And Diane, you said you're not gonna be a lame duck, you know, standing. I want you to get these students back on campus. These special ed kids, these special uh, uh, English learners, they should not wait till March 1st. They need to be on campus since August. And I'm shameful that this district has not done anything for our population. And I look forward to hearing more about this in the future. Thank you. Thank you. The next is Sarah Ponsford. Hello, are you able to hear me? Yes. I, I commented the last couple of meetings. I'm a parent of a daughter with an intellectual disability and I'm also this chair of the Sonoma CAC. Um, and I understand that it's very complex and there's a lot that goes into getting small cohorts for special education. But I do just want to point out one more time that for some of the students, not all of our students um, with disabilities are having trouble with Zoom. Some are actually thriving. Not every family with a student with a disability wants them to come back immediately. But for some of our families, their children cannot access Zoom. And those children are still entitled to a free and appropriate education and um, I'm just calling on the board to make this a priority to figure out, and you know, if it's, if you can only find the staff for one cohort and you can only provide that for, you know, a small amount of students, I understand that. But right now, none are in small cohorts and um, it's just a crisis for some of these families. And I, I'm asking that this, um, thank you for everyone that's um, kept this at the front of the conversation. I just ask you to continue to do that. Thank you. Thank you. And as Dr. Kitabura mentioned, there are just a, a couple more people who were in our original list that have raised their hand a long time ago. Patrick Bailey, you are next. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Thanks. Um, my name is Patrick Bailey, and I had written out some comments, and I need to modify them. The first thing I want to mention is that parents, a number of parents have been accused of teacher bashing. And I wanna be explicit that nobody should confuse parents attempting to organize ourselves uh, to, to somehow represent ourselves, the level of frustration we feel about the slow process of return to school, that to conflate that with, with teacher bashing is just, it's, it's, it's just not correct. Um, so that's the, my preface. I was excited when I woke up today. I was optimistic that COVID case rates are down the seven day average is about 21 per 100,000. Today's value was 17. Um, I rode my bike with my son and his five-year-old buddy to pick up uh, school supplies at school and just being on campus, they just lit up. Uh, we need more of that lighting up. My, my ask for tonight 
we have to get special ed kids back in school as soon as possible. It, it, based on what I heard tonight, it appears we're breaking the law. Um, they could and should be in school right now. And if they lived one county south, they would have been in school for, for something like eight months. Um, I'm aware of 10 year olds supervising eight year old siblings with special needs. Uh, I know of a nonverbal kid who's, whose full day of school was replaced with Zoom. It's not hard to find these stories. Um, I want our kid in school as soon as possible, but one way or another, my kid is gonna be fine. My wife and I will make sure of it one way or another. We're lucky, we're privileged, we have options. Please get the special ed kids back. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bailey. And uh, John Schiff was also on that original list. Good evening, my name is Maria and I'm gonna read a public comment from a fellow mom, Sarah, who has a kid in the spectrum and also she's a nurse in an emergency department. Um, I'm gonna summarize it uh, because of the time. She says, my child is miserably regressing in multiple areas due to the refusal to provide in-person instruction. I'm sorry, my kid is in the spectrum, I'm on the same boat. Um, to provide in-person instruction for our vulnerable students by these county's leaders in education. Private schools has been in session since August and some charter schools are soon to start as well. Yet my child who requires a specialized instruction according to his IEP still only offer distance teaching via Zoom. For some developmental disabled children it's like offering one crutch to a quadriplegic. A crutch will help some people, but it is not what that person needs to succeed. In the emergency room, I have encountered countless persons with uh, COVID, yet I have never even needed to be tested for COVID because mask and hand hygiene work. We need to stop leading with fear, but instead lead with knowledge. We need to equip our educators with the power to keep themselves safe by training them in proper mask wearing proper hand hygiene and proper donning and doffing of PPE. While the current offering of distance teaching works for some students, it is also falling others. Some of our children are in crisis. They need help now. I ask that those who receive this message, they have the power to help these children do so. Their future depends on it. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Maria. Um, I'm just going to assume your last name is Schiff, but if it's different, could you tell me your last name, please, for the record? Yes, I'm so sorry. Yes, Maria Schiff, sure. on behalf of Sarah Keys. Thank you very much. Our last comment that was on our original list, and thank you all, um, and thank you for your patience tonight, is Donna Prack. Everyone else, if you could please uh, email your comment. Hi, good evening. Um, a lot of people have already stated what I wanted to. You know, we love our teachers. We love everybody that's working so hard trying to get our kids back to school. But you can hear the frustration and knowing that it just feels like it's never going to happen, especially since our most vulnerable students haven't been receiving the quality education or the support that they should be getting. It makes me so grateful that my kids are healthy and they don't have uh, a learning disability or that they don't need special ed services because I could only imagine what those parents are going through when my biggest complaint is that my kids are staring at their screens all day just to talk to their friends outside of school hours. You know, we want sports too, but all I want is just for my kids to be able to see their friends. And I think if we can't even get our most vulnerable students served, how are we supposed to bring back the kids that don't need as much help? And I just wish that as much as I see tonight at the meeting of the district working to have a re safe return to school plan, I feel that the there needs to be a compromise between the district 
and the union. So I just hope that um, all the teams involved can come to an agreement so that we can get our kids back to school, hopefully in March. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Thank you, and uh, President Fong, that is the end of the uh, public comment from our list that we took when we closed public comment a while ago. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Everybody's been very patient. And um, I'm just gonna thank our superintendent and her team for the incredible careful work that you've put in. Thank you to the support staff for the technical help and the behind the scenes help. And to our board members who have stepped up with our translation, which was critical. So thank you so much. And I'm very proud that so many of us, okay, me this much, speak Spanish. So I think that's incredible. Um, this is just a discussion item and it's very late. So board members, way on in, please. I'm gonna put you on the same timer, two minutes. And then we're going to move on. I see no hands. Director Sheffield. Just going to be very brief and just appreciate the patience of all the folks um, who spoke during public comment and who are still here at 1113 um, following this really important discussion. We'll continue to have this discussion um, week after week. Um, and, you know, one of the public comment speakers talked about the waiting place, and I hate this waiting place too, and I read the story with my son yesterday, and this is also, you know, a, 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 oh, the places you go story, you know, um, that, that the elementary students um, at, at my kid's school are reading, and, 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 you know, she's absolutely right, and then hearing, you know, the concerns about their own safety from our staff absolutely you know and 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 then to have mixed messages and policy implementation that seems to change on a weekly if not daily basis it's you know and the fact that we're discussing this and it's 11 15 you know on a wednesday night and you know by next week we're going to have a new policy shift we're going to see something by the end of this week as a policy shift from you know from our state and federal um uh, policy makers I, I, I'm going to, again, I want to keep it really short. I want to stress that my concerns about our school community's special population, and I appreciate the priority of preparing for the future return of all of our vulnerable populations, special ed and English language learners included, but this priority needs to be immediate. I will say that. And then the other concern that I have and is, is around busing and transportation. I know this is a big issue and it impacts many of our most vulnerable. Um, as we move forward, so do other districts in the JPA. And I know, as Rick pointed out, that you know this is not a bright red point on the readiness chart, but it is red nonetheless. And I'm hoping that we can um, keep a closer eye on this and keep us um, posted and updated on what is happening in West County. I'll stop there. Thank you, Director Sheffield. Is that a hand up, Director De La Cruz? Yes, sorry. My background makes it fuzzy. Um, so I, you know, I think that I'm, I'm gonna just speak to equity. Um, we're having this conversation in every single way that we can throughout every single system. And when we talk about vulnerable people or vulnerable kids, we have to recognize that it's our systems that create the vulnerability. And if our systems are not designed to make sure that those kids are less vulnerable, then it's our responsibility to make sure that they do. So in the same way that we're asking people who are 65 and over, who don't have underlying medical conditions and who have the luxury of staying home to wait their turn in line until people can, can really make sure that they are taking that advantage of getting the vaccine, that's the same conversation that we need to have in this institution as well. So if you have kids at home and you're at home and you can all shelter in place and your kid is struggling with the isolation, um, and I know that that is true, if you care about equity, 
then you make sure that we do everything we can to focus on the kids who have legal rights to be in person and who desperately need us to center them, to focus on them and to make sure that they have everything that they need right now because they, they need us more than other people need us right now. And, um, and so, you know, I think those are horrible things. Those are horrible choices that we are asking everybody to make um, and, and very hard decisions after months and months of this, but that is gonna continue to be my ask to our community as a whole, um, is that we really think about, you know, how to identify and make sure that we are lifting up those kids who need us most. And that if we have the capacity to keep our kids home and you know, to, to do everything we can to keep ourselves as sane as we can so that we can really get ready, ready, ready to go back, all of us, when it's really, really, really safe, that's what we're asking us to do. Um, and so I just joined Director Sheffield in saying, please prioritize those kids. Please, I'm asking SRTA, I'm asking CSEA, and I'm asking the district um, that we need to come together for those kids who really need us right now. And for those parents who have the luxury of being home with their kids and struggling through what it feels to distance learn, um, you know, give us some space to continue to make all of those important, um, you know, tweaks and pushes and plans and efforts that we need to do to make sure that we can all come back together safely. Um, and thank you um, to district admin and staff. I know that this is, these are impossible things to do and impossible choices to make. Um, none of them are easy and none of them feel right. Um, but I think if we really think about what we have the privilege um, to, to shoulder for people who don't, um, we need to keep those shoulders strong for those folks in our community um, who have shouldered an absolutely unacceptable higher burden than others because of where they sit and the color of their skin. Um, so, adelante y gracias. Director Medina. Yeah, just real quick. Um, as, as we move forward on making a decision, I just want us to, to again remember that there's limited things that are within our power. For example, I don't think vaccines are necessarily within our power, um, that we remain focused on the facts. This is a very emotional issue, but let's focus on the facts and the data. Um, new research constantly provides new information as to what safe and what safe means. Um, and, and we just look at the numbers and the data provided by, by the public health authorities such as the CDC. And, and we make and base our decisions off of the best information possible um, so we can move forward in, in the most expedited way. And then we prioritize with an equity lens. I checked in with Director Manieri and she's good without a comment. I will just add again that um, parent, everyone tonight, I, I commend you for being gentle and, and helpful with your comments and saying what you need and speaking your truth without bashing anybody. I, I just commend everybody who spoke tonight. And I think we, we need to, as a district, stick with the health guidelines, which we have. And I understand parents that you think that we're not getting there, but we are getting there. And when we get compared to surrounding areas, we have to remember that the surrounding areas are different than we are. Sonoma County is different. There's a reason for us, our numbers, and there's a reason for our decisions. But we hear you, we understand what you're saying. I, I don't think I could have disagreed with very much of what anybody said tonight. And staff, you know, we're take, we all wanna take care of our kids. We all wanna take care of staff. So. Again, we all pretty much want the same things. And really, Diane and your team navigating this with invention and with care and preciseness and correctness is, is an amazing feat. And, and we just are grateful. And so we're gonna keep the discourse up. Thank you, everyone. And we are moving on to item four. This is an action item, approval of memorandum of understanding with special education case managers. 
class of 2020-21 individual graduation plans. <clears throat> um, this item is um, Assistant Superintendent Trinnell. Uh, she will be speaking to us. Good evening and thank you. Um, good evening, Board President Fong, Superintendent Kitamura, members of the board and all attendees. We present to you tonight a memorandum of understanding for special education case managers to support current seniors with individual graduation plan interventions with additional compensation for doing so. With that, I'll be brief and turn it back to you, President Fong. Thank you. Do we have questions? I see no hands up. Time for public comment. If you'd like to comment, um, on this issue, item E4, please raise your hand. And I see Rebecca Samet would like to comment. Yes, hello. Um, I apologize. I'm actually in the middle of writing an email to comment. So can someone tell me what this topic is so I can either comment or pass? This is a memorandum of understanding for special education case managers, class of 2021 individual graduation plan intervention and compensation. Okay, that is not a topic that I am ready to speak on. So um, I'll pass, but thank you. Thank you very much. And President Fong, it appears there are no hands. Board members, any discussion? All right, call for the motion. Um, I move that we have the approval of memorandum of understanding for special education case managers class of 2021, individual graduation plan intervention and compensation. Second. Thank you, Dr. Sheffield. <laughs> so that was moved by Director, uh, Vice President McCormick and Director Sheffield. Director Lopez. Aye. Director McCormick. Aye. Director Sheffield. Aye. Director Monieri. Director De La Cruz. Aye. Director Flores. Aye. Director Medina. Aye. President Fong. Aye. Thank you, that passes. And I just wanna take a second to ask Superintendent Kitamori if she had any one more thing to read on return to school, I, I didn't ask you. Oh, I, I appreciate that, President Fong. I have a lot to say, but because of time, I won't. Uh, I just would ask that the public remember, our parents remember, everybody who spoke tonight remembers that um, I magically do not change overnight about my stance on equity. It, it's deep within my heart. And I can tell you, um, Steve Mazzaro has agonized and Dr. Guzman has agonized about our EL and our special ed students and how we can get them back um, and get them served. Uh, so please know the public, we do not take it lightly. Um, and I take wholeheartedly the feedback that if there has been a communication gap with any of our parents on the ability to come back in small groups, my staff is going to investigate it because it, it, that's happened, it's not right and we will make it right. So, and I'll leave it at that. Okay, thank you, Diane. Um, we are moving, oh, we are moving on to consent items and that would be consent items two through seven and Correct. then nine through 12. Correct. Move to approve items F2 through F7 and F9 through F12. Second. All right, so that was moved by Director Medina and seconded by, and I'm sorry, I didn't see that. Me. Director Dillard. You know, so your voices kind of sound the same. <laughs> okay. May we have that vote, please? Director Lopez. Aye. 
Director Medina. Aye. Director De La Cruz. Aye. Director Manieri. Director Sheffield. Aye. Director McCormick. Aye. Director Flores. Aye. President Fong. Aye. You guys are messing. <laughs> Item G, approval of the minutes of the regular board meeting held on January 27th, 2021. Move to approve the meeting, the minutes of the regular meeting. Uh... Second. Thank you, Director Diana Cruz. And seconded by Omar Medina. Second. Director Lopez. Aye. Director De La Cruz. Aye. Director Medina. Uh, Director Manieri. Director Sheffield. Aye. Director McCormick. Aye. Director Flores. Aye. President Fong. Aye. Thank you. That passes. Do we have board member requests for information? Director Flores. Uh, yeah couple of things. Do we have uh, closed caption capability for our hearing impaired members? Um, I'd like to know that if we if we have that here. Um, and also in regards to the IGP demographic information, it would be nice to have an update on the rollout of this program, how many students have been contacted. I mean, um, I, I know Diane, we talked about this in our meeting, but um, I like to know this. I don't know, have, have there been any hurdles uh, that we are made of? Do schools need support from us? I'd like to know, you know, what's going on with the um, IGP rollout at this point, right? So, um, you know, if, if we had any students that, that are hard to get, or, you know, I, I know our staff is doing their, their best to reach out to everyone, but I'd like to know, um, what's going on at this juncture um, with the IGP and um, how many students um, have been reached and how many students are still missing or MIA, um, that sort of stuff, okay. Yeah, we, we actually have a, a plate, as a result of our conversation, we have a board item placed uh, coming up to do an update on the IGP when we'll present that information. Great, thank you. Okay, seeing no other hands. I direct your attention to the information items put on the agenda for us to read. Is there any other thing, any other thing for the good of the order? And a special thank you tonight to Adina Flores, Marticella and Beth Burke for a behind the scenes work along with Deputy Superintendent Rick Edson and his crew. Yeah. All right, Beth, Diane, is there anything else? Beth, Beth Burke is a baller. She is, she is mean. She's good. She's, I love it. <laughs> That's it. Uh, okay. Special special thank you to Stephanie Magnetti for oh, yes, Stephanie. being Show yourself a back rock back star back. interpreter tonight. Thank you, Steph. And, yeah. and yes, the next time, if, if this ever happens again, it's Omar and Ever's turn, okay? <laughs> Got it. Um, yeah. I, I do have a comment on an information item number five. Is it? Is it a, a, can I can I say something about that, or or is it too late? It was stable to another meeting. Okay. So, um, uh, Diane, I, I know you and I went, you know, and talked, about, you know, agnosium about this, but um, uh, the report that we that we received from SCO was a little bit. Um, to, to me, it was a little bit misleading. Um, uh, they just copy and pasted everything from every, every single school. Uh, they mentioned that they also um, had a report about BLM Elementary. The, uh, that report was missing in the report. So, um, and, you know, they said that we didn't have any misassignments. And, and I know we've, you know, we, we, we talked in here about the misassignments. So I just, I was a little bit turned off by, by that um report being submitted um from SCO to our school board um and i just thought i should bring it up and and, and i know diane is going to follow up on that but it was just um um i don't know i was taken aback a little bit when i read that and, and noticed that you know they were supposed to uh, report it, every single school and it was just a copy and paste of every, every single school 
and then BLI was missing in, 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 in the reporting. So um, I just needed to um, bring that up to everyone's attention here. Again, um, as a part of our conversation, I spoke to uh, the team and from a policy standpoint, we will bring forward um, a report on the uh, Assistant Superintendent Chanel, remind me the acronym that we went through to audit all of the credentials. And it happened after the first quarter, which this report was for the first quarter. But what was that process called? Yes, it's called CalSACE. CalSACE, and it's new this year. Yes. Right? This is the first time we've ever done it. We went through a major first round of audits and that's where that information came from that you heard um director flores about the misassignments but it was after this first quarter we have to go through another round in when um in march march and so after that uh audit we will bring forward a report so that you can examine policy any policy changes that might need to happen as a result of potentially some of the misassignments Okay. Thank you. And with that, good night, everybody. The meeting is adjourned. Hi. Good night. Dr. Sheffield.